Alright guys, so this is literally the first thing I'm going to do with uh, preparing my hive. So I got the brood box here, I showed you all a video where um, I actually purchased this stuff. Now uh, from my research, I see that everybody or most people paint or seal in some way the uh, box. And the reason for that is because they're made out of soft pine and they will rot and it's an investment and you want to keep it as good as you can, as long as you can. So uh, I see most people paint it white and one of the reasons I heard for that is it's going to reflect heat obviously and it's going to be um, better in the summer for the bees. In my case um, I do have some white spray paint but I also have a bunch of uh, like polyurethane and I have some stain conditioner that, that will actually seep into that wood first and seal it up. So I'm going to just use the stuff that I have rather than go out and buy new stuff because uh, the white spray paint that I have isn't really, it's not high-end good outdoor spray paint so I'm going to just use what I have and I'll bring you along. Alright gang, so I got this Sabbat pre-stained wood conditioner that I'm going to put on there just because I have it. I've had it for years and why not use up what I got. I'm going to put that on there with this foam brush and just try to get all the places that would be exposed especially on the ends here, oh, great job, especially on the ends here um, where the wood fiber is because that'll soak up, that'll soak up the nasty, it'll soak up all the water and it'll rot there first. Just want to get it on there. Have a pre-stained sealer. And then I'll go over it with some polyurethane. I'm going to keep them natural. Um, for no other reason other than, you know, like I said, most people paint them white. Not everybody. People paint them different colors. I asked them, you know, why white or do I have to paint it white? And they said, no. You know, any color you want, just don't paint it black or dark. And this stuff says just leave it on there five minutes and wipe off the excess. And then immediately put stain on it. It's supposed to help give a uniform coat of stain this pre-app, but it also says that it seals everything, so that's why I'm using it. We're getting all parts, especially this porous fiber in the ends. You'll see what I mean, it soaks it right in. Get this knot really well with the tops. I like the natural wood look. No reason to have to paint it a color, so I won't. You know what? No need to really have to worry about how this goes on. Slop it on, which I'm good at. Just slopping things on. <laughs> Soaks right in there nice. Plus, there's no need to do the inside of the box because that'll be covered. So there shouldn't be any weather getting in there. Hey guys, I waited the prescribed amount of time. I'm going to just wipe off the excess here and then immediately put on a polyurethane. Fast drying polyurethane. Great for floors, clear gloss. Use this on a project, I don't remember which one. Might have been the kitchen table. And if so, that was about nine years ago. So this could be toast if I can't get into it, who knows. People drive up and down the street, see me out here doing this and filming and go, what the heck is that guy doing? Again, it doesn't have to be a great job. I'm just sealing the wood. That's all this is for. It's not for aesthetics. Sealing the wood. I'll just do one coat, most likely. 
can always go back and do another if I choose. I don't think it's necessary. Um, I've seen videos where people say you don't treat it and within a couple of years you really start seeing the rot and the hive starts to break down. If you treat it, it could give you an extra three, four, five years depending on what kind of weather conditions you're in. I may end up putting a tarp over the top of this to keep, you know, a lot of the brutal rain off. Let me know what you think about that. Am I hurting the bees by doing that? Helping the bees? Does it not make a difference? I don't know. I'm depending on y'all to tell me. Get that fiber right there really well. Let it soak right in. And unless we forget, there's other components here that we have to take care of. And this is the top. I got forget what they call this, but I got the uh, metal on the top of the brood box. That is protection in and of itself, but there's a part of the wood that is not protected. So I'm going to go through and get all the wood part protected. Some polyurethane. And I got the, uh, the other top piece underneath it. Now this, this other top piece is going to be covered. But since it's out here and I'm doing this, I'll just go ahead and put some polyurethane on all of it. Now some of you might tell me, and I don't know this for fact, you might say, oh, polyurethane's the wrong thing to put on there because of X, Y, and Z. Well, if that's the case, I'm in trouble now because I'm already knee deep into it. Um, I hope that's not the case. I hope I'm not making a mistake by doing this. I'm one of those guys that likes to beg forgiveness instead of ask permission. And it carries through and when it comes to finding out how to do things before I do it. A lot of times I'll just watch a couple of videos or read an article and go hell bent into it as opposed to, you know, doing more due diligence. Sometimes that bites me. But I'm also one of those guys that's a doer rather than a talk about it. Um, we've all come in contact with those people who are like engineers. They like to talk about it. We talk things to death and have meetings about things. And I just go, you know what, let me get out there and do it. One way or another it gets done, even if I have to do it twice, because I'm a doofus. Let that dry. And just a quick coat here on the top, even though it's going to be covered. Might as well. Give me a minute, get it done. I don't know it's protected or better protected. We got people going up and down the street and giving me these looks like, what the heck is this cat doing? Every day you see people in beehives up here in my hood. In fact, this is probably the first day that anybody's seen it because I haven't seen any beehives around here. Which is further confirmation that I'm different <laughs> amongst these people. It's nice and sealed. piece and it's the bottom with the screen on it. I'll get to that next. It's 
So I've heard the screen is a must down in the south. And when I say must, I don't mean that you have to have it. But beekeepers down here say that it's good in the summer. It helps with ventilation. Uh, the place that I bought it from said that's all they use. Um, and I also have, I don't know if you can see it back there against the van. Have, uh, I don't know what you call it. But it's an insert. It has the alphabet and some numbers on it. Let's see if I can get it. There it is. And that slides into the bottom of the hive and apparently it helps you identify whether or not you have a mite problem. Um, and there's a calculation that you use with the numbers and the letters and I don't know what it is yet. But there's that. All right, I'm going to just let this stuff dry and then determine if I want to put a second coat on. So that's it in a nutshell. Uh, my first time really touching this hive, I'm going to put it all back together. i got to put some staples in the bottom plate to connect it to the brood box, put the frames in. we got the frames and foundations already set up, ready to go. And then bam, come off to the races. I'll let that dry. So with the package came these uh, staples, there's four of them. I gotta staple the bottom plate piece onto the brew box. And I saw how they looked in the store. We do it just like that. Let's stop recording for some reason, but I got the staples in both sides. A lot easier when you're pounding into a hard surface. It doesn't give. What's next? I'm putting in the frames. So these are the deep frames with the foundations in there. I purchased them originally. Yes. I purchased them originally um, unassembled. When I went to go pick them up, I asked her if I could buy them assembled. Because remember she left them out of my box, out of the package when I bought it. And she said, oh, I have nine assembled. I'm so sorry that you had to come back. So I'll give you those nine and we'll make another one right now. So she showed me how to make them. Uh, a little tedious, I'm glad I bought them. They're an extra dollar when you buy them put together and it's probably well worth the 10 bucks or the 10 frames. But she gave them to me for, their, for no extra cost because I had to come back. So that was cool. There's a little lip inside here that you just put them on. show you here. They put bobby pins in here. You slide them in through here and the bobby pin goes on either side of the foundation and it keeps it from going back and forth. Ingenious little beehive technique. I will most definitely be rating my daughter's health and beauty aid stuff when I need more my high tool. I saw, I saw a guy using these to make sure that there was enough room between each one. I'm not sure exactly what he was doing. But I guess the idea is that you don't want him building a bridge, a wax bridge between frames, which makes sense. So he used this, but he was measuring it was somehow. I don't know how he was measuring it, but he was. I don't know. Anyway, that's done. Oh. Apply this guy underneath. Again, I got to figure out the formula on how this works as far as the mites go. You know what? I'll leave this out until it dries all the way, so I don't get it stuck. Alright, 
There's one beehive. I'm gonna fly in right here and go do their business. Up into the hive. All right, guys, that's gonna be my second video in this series, and um, I'll, I'll do more and I'll put it in a playlist. It's gonna be a beehive playlist that you guys can go back to and just look at the progression, see all the mistakes I make, and hopefully not make the same mistakes. Thanks for watching.